Today we're going to talk about how to use total station data to run a crush profile around a vehicle and then use that profile to determine crush calculation data such as a barrier equivalent velocity. First thing we want to do is we want to open up our scene and go to our measurements tab to import the data that you used for the total station. I'm going to go into the measurements tab and import data log. At this point I'm going to look for the file that I've actually saved on my desktop. It already exists. And specifically I'm going to be using a CSV format. Uh, you can also bring in a capture file if you'd like. So I'm going to look for the CSV import and browse for the folder. This is the same method you would use to bring in your, uh, your captured data as well. So it should look a little familiar. I'll look for my desktop here. There's the uh, the file with the crush RSX data. I'm going to highlight that and hit open and proceed through the processes. As you can see here, I'm going to import the data through a CSV format. Uh, I'm not going to use the uh, the feature codes on this and it's going to create a new layer. It's going to be called crushed RSX, which is very important for this uh, for this application. The measurement log is also very very important. If you have a generic measurement log name, uh, it might be a little tough for you to identify it when we go through the uh, the process of, of bringing that measurement log in to actually crush the vehicle to this point. So um, identify that log as specifically the vehicle that you are um, that you are actually shooting. Uh, Keep in mind, you may have your scene data in there. You may have two or three other vehicles that you did this with. So uh, to keeping those names separate is, uh, is going to be very helpful down the road. And proceeding through the import phase for the CSV data, I'm going to go ahead and place this in the middle of our canvas. And we should have that data now imported in the middle of our canvas here. You can see over here that it did create a layer and it identified that layer as the measurement log for the crushed RSX. On the screen you see a series of points, um, obviously in yellow, that's the color I choose to use uh, for this. And then also inside there the points are actually a little bit larger. Um, you can adjust those points, keep in mind when you click on your, your measurement log and come over here to actions in the measurements property and then adjust that, that point size. Just a little reminder if, you, uh, if you're not aware. Um, also in there you can kind of see that in the measurement log we have um, the series of, of points in the coordinate system here and as I scroll down through this you can see under codes uh, that most of the coding is identified as the Acura and then when we get to a certain location like point 27 it goes to identify as crush and when I highlight that you can kind of see that that crush actually begins in the side of this vehicle the right side of this vehicle right here and actually wanders around here all the way down to, um, I believe it's going to be uh, 0.40, yeah, 42. So it's going to go all the way down and around. That's kind of important to know. You're going to know your car when you actually shoot this. But, but again, uh, the idea of this is to kind of identify where that crush contact point is, that contact patch. So I'm going to exit out of this, clip out of these. Okay, from now, for now what I'm going to be doing is I need to bring the model in that I'm going to use for this. So I'm going to go back to my Draw tab and go to Models, and I'm going to specifically look for the, uh, the, the model that I'm going to use, which happens to be this blue Acura RSX. I'm going to click on this and bring it into my canvas. Okay, some good rules, some good practices here is when you bring this model in, inside this data set that you used with your total station uh, points at the yard or at the scene, wherever you, you took this or collected this data, also inside this data you should collect some control points on that model or on that damaged vehicle, such as maybe the center of the hubs or maybe the, the base of the pillars. Um, that way when you place the vehicle inside this field of data, you have a control point and not just a random location inside that data field. Again, good practices. Um, don't want to change your, your SOPs, but at the same time, um, bring that in on, on some control points and not necessarily the data points. So you can kind of see here that what I've done here is I've actually dropped this vehicle in, uh, kind of get to a different location here. You can actually see a little better uh, what that looks like. So you can kind of see that the data was collected about 18 inches or bumper height around the vehicle and the field was actually collected 
um, using a total station and a prism rod. You could also do this in, uh, in non-prism mode uh, as long as you stay consistent around that height wise uh, for, the, for the later calculation results uh, for your crush. Okay, so now once I've got the vehicle placed inside the, the data field here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my actions in my measurements or my on my properties here for my vehicle and go down to where it says edit damage profiles. Again, if to, to locate that, just simply click on the vehicle and then go to actions or you could also right click and, and get that same edit damage profile field. So I'm going to go to actions and hit edit damage profiles. And inside this window, it's going to want to know, okay, what side or what location on the vehicle are we going to actually be damaging? This is where you got to identify the right side, left side, top, rear, whatever you're going to be uh, working on or is applicable for this particular uh, section. We're going to be doing the right side. And the damage type, we have three choices here. We have freehand, which we can go over later. Um, we have a, a measured jig um, where we have a box around the vehicle and we're taking control points using uh, jig rods. And then we also have measured total, uh, total station or survey points. You can also use the, the GNSS um, as well if, if, you, if you have one of the R4s or one of the R series or a GNSS uh, device to, to do that. So I'm going to select the measure survey and I'm going to do right side damage, six points of interest on that crush. And then again, I'm going to identify what log um, that I'm going to use that's applicable for this model which happens to be the only one in the layers or the one that I have but if again if I had a scene or if I had multiple vehicles um, that I did this with I actually have to drop this box down and locate that that RSX um, box down here that, that this is the uh, the data that we're going to be using so I'm going to hit add in there the next thing that pops up here is going to be your damage editor kind of move it over here to the side a little bit uh, what we're looking at here is a side profile, right side profile of the RSX. And, and what we're going to do here in this feature is we're going to identify um, these points of damage, specifically the points that we shot for that vehicle. Uh, we talked about having that contact patch and then uh, and using those codes for crush to identify the width of our contact patch. And you can see here when I move my mouse from right to left, um, when I actually are on top of one of those points, that identifies what those points are. Okay, um, so this is probably the trickiest part of this. So what you want to do is you want to grab the, I'll grab the forward grip here, the front grip, and put my cursor on top of it, left click and hold it down. And then I'm going to pull my mouse down just so I can get those points to identify where I'm going to set that front crush point. And I know that point number 27 is the, the, the furthest forward crush point uh, for the damage on this particular vehicle. Uh, likewise, I'm going to grab the, the grip to the back and move it rear um, to the furthest point, which happens to be point 42. And again, what I'm doing here is I'm left clicking, holding the left click down and moving that box down to that point. So it essentially snaps to that point location. And now what you see here is you see a red box that's identifying that crush patch um, down here on the, uh, the 3D version of, of, the, uh, of the model. Okay, and you can also over here, you can also see that you could actually enter the, the manual height and, and width and the offsets vertically and horizontally if you've known those measurements. Okay, you can also do that by grabbing those grips. Keep in mind if you have pocket damage, maybe lower pocket damage, you can also drop that down. Keep in mind that red box is the identifier of what is going to be damaged. Anything inside that red box is going to show the damage. Anything outside the red box will not. Okay, and it's contact damage that we're wanting. So uh, from this point, I'm going to go ahead and go up to where it says apply damage on the little tab up here next to set. Apply damage. And you can see that it changes the verticals. It changes the look of it vertically looking down on top of the, of the model. After we have that placed, we're going to go ahead and hit crush to measurements. And it's a simple click, crush to measurements. As soon as I do that, you can see that everything inside that red box is now crushed to those measurements that you, uh, that you established using your total station. Once we're done with that, we can come up here and, and, and look at the view crush profiles, the tab, the third tab to the right. So you can see in here, you can get the exact depths that's located on the six points of interest. And then right below that, you have the crush calculations button where you can actually go down and use those, those depths 
in the crush calculations. When I click on that, you can see that the window pops up and, and you can determine your crush energy calculations. Uh, once you've de determined some fields that need to be filled in, such as stiffnesses for coefficients and then, then your width of, uh, I'm sorry, the impact, impact angles. And, um, and, and keep in mind, your stiffness coefficients that you determine are going to be the A, B, and Gs, and then your static uh, weight, um, which you can get through your vehicle links um, uh, inside the program. And that will give you the barrier equivalent velocities and print a report out as well. Okay. So hopefully this is helpful for you uh, when, when going in and, and using your total station or your GNSS device or maybe even, uh, maybe even using your scanner to bring it in and use your virtual total station to determine what those points are uh, inside the program as well. If you have any questions, please contact us and uh, we'll, we'll try to do everything we can for you to help you out. Thank you.